So reasons to reach out when you're not sure if now is the time to call. This is actually a webinar that we did earlier this year. I think it was February or maybe very early March when the pandemic was just beginning. And whew, I mean, that was a, a, a challenging time. It was a scary time. We weren't really sure what's the right, we had never been through this before. What's the right way to approach um, prospecting? What's the, what's the right way to approach uh, reaching out to our clients and you know the initial reaction I think the tendency could be to freeze kind of like a, a, a have a little bit of paralysis because just the hesitant uh, feeling of being unsure of, of how this would land or do people want to be reached out to and I think what we came to realize is that the more we could connect with each other, the more we did reach out, the better it felt. We helped each other through this process. We leaned on each other. That is now per what I'd like to bring back. I purposely chose to do this webinar again right now, the week before Thanksgiving, because you know, reaching out to either clients or prospects, especially for reaching out by phone or, or setting up Zoom meetings, um, could be one of the easiest things to talk ourselves out of especially when it comes to making phone calls. And what, what's, what's the reasoning for now is, you know, next week starts the holiday season. Next week is Thanksgiving. We, you know, traditionally assume people will be with their families or people might be traveling. And, and this, this mentality, I've, I've experienced it myself, I've had uh, experienced it with the salespeople I've managed, is that there can be this mentality of like, well, I mean, between, Thanksgiving and New Year is kind of like this black hole of a period where, you know, sales are going to be tough or it's going to be hard to get a hold of people. You know, I've even had, uh, I posted on LinkedIn recently, even having business owners ask me, entrepreneurs, is it even worth focusing on sales between now and January? And um, I'm happy that that uh, business owner asked that question because the answer is yes, of course it is. It's important. And, uh, even if we are, you know, um, not going to get the same kind of progress in terms of moving forward on next steps that we might at a different time of the year, it's important to be planting those seeds now, starting the relationship, starting to build that value. Because when January comes around, there is that change. People kind of snap back into it. There's new goals, new opportunities. It's a fresh year. However, if we start in, you know, if we start now, we can circle back and move forward in January versus if we wait until January to start having conversations, we're not going to move forward until March or April um, later on in the year. So welcome everybody. I see we've got uh, Brian from North Reading. We've got Mitchell, Calgary, Julia from Calgary. Welcome. B from Alberta uh, and Christine from C uh, Seattle. So thank you everyone again for joining. So my background, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I've met a, a great amount of you, but just to go through for anyone, this is your first time. I've been in sales for my entire uh, working life, professional life outside of college. Originally wanted to be a history professor, still have that passion for teaching, which is uh, partly why I focus a lot on sales training now. However, I did start as a salesperson with Equinox in 2013, a commission-based sales role did really well right off the bat. And after just over a year, I was promoted to a regional sales manager. And I spent the next five plus years with Equinox leading our sales teams in the New York tri-state area. And, you know, my, the two things that I'm most proud of are really is one, you know, we led some of the biggest turnarounds in the entire company. And that is an award the company would give at our sales forum in January each year. And out of the six years that we were eligible, uh, I had a team win that award three of those years. And that is, uh, you, you have to be within the top five of 100 teams and have the biggest difference from one year to the next in sales. The, what I was really most proud of though, and, and there was no award, formal award for this, but I knew just from the data, is that we had among the lowest amount of turnover in the entire company. Why does that make me proud? Well, sales can be very difficult. Sales can be a high turnover business. There can be a lot of failure, rejection in sales. I, my, part of my purpose is to bring longevity because longevity in a sales role, whether it's for a salesperson or a sales business can be life-changing. And ultimately, it, you know, it, it's, it's success, right? It's reaching our goals and success. And I think that um, the sales 
profession is an amazing one. It's changed my life in many ways. And I think that uh, if, if there's more time invested in training, um, and you know, salespeople are managed and led in the right way, they can achieve that same life-changing success as I did. Um, and I did have the opportunity to spend four plus years uh, training uh, at our corporate headquarters, leading sales training for not only our salespeople and managers, but also our executives. That would be stop number one of onboarding at Equinox. Um, there was a really devoted sales culture there. And in 2020, earlier this year, I had the amazing opportunity to connect with Kim Orleski, join her team. She's taken me under her wing. And in that sense, 2020 has been the best year ever. I get to do great webinars like this and uh, help sales teams now uh, and businesses experience that longevity through increased sales and consistent sales. And we are, for those who are not familiar, we are a sales process built on connecting with clients, truly forming an emotional connection through emotional intelligence for high value deals, high value clients. And that is what we focus on. We really focus on getting the emotional buy-in and we focus on high value product services, but also a high value experience. Ultimately what we provide is more sleep to business owners. If you can predict this, either the size of your deals, but more importantly, the consistency, if you know what your sales funnel looks like and what your sales funnel will look like three months from now, you can rest a little easier. In addition to resting a little easier, like all rest, it enables us to be our best selves. It empowers us. And now we have the empowerments to gain the right clients, to focus on the ones that are gonna have the best relationships in the long run. It empowers us to maybe take on greater things, focus on growing our business in different ways if we've really tackled the sales and gotten our revenue and cash flow to the point where we can rely on it. Have less anxiety and less uncertainty. Less anxiety and less uncertainty is definitely something we can all use uh, in the world today, especially now here in 2020. So today though, is the reasons to reach out, right? What The first thing we wanna understand before we do reach out is what is our client going through? Right now it's November. We are at a point where, again, there might be different distractions or opportunities because of the holidays. We have a potential second wave of COVID for, uh, I know many of you are in Canada. You know, I'm here in the United States, I'm based in New York. And um, that is, uh, unfortunately in the United States, we're going through a really, really tough second wave that is ramping up. Um, so we're kind of experiencing some more lockdowns and things are going backwards a little bit, but we know they're going to go forward eventually. We've gotten good news, of course, all of us for the vaccines, et cetera. However, that, that kind of trepidation, that fear, that uncertainty is setting back in a little bit. No better time than now to start connecting. Before we do make that phone call or send that email, we should ask what, you know, ourselves, what could my client be concerned with right now? What do we think is their biggest concern? Enter with empathy always, right? And stand in their shoes. I was listening to a great podcast with um, Guy Raz, who talks to entrepreneurs, and he was talking to uh, Kenneth Cole, uh, famous uh, you know shoe um, designer here in the United States, and I'm sure globally. Uh, but he, you know, he has a quote that he says, that "I stand in I stand in my customers' shoes, so they'll stand in mine." And I thought, wow. What a great quote, right, for all of us. If we can you know, stand in our customer's shoes, so then they will stand in our services, experiences, products that we provide. We don't want to assume, always, of course, and we want to treat people how we want to be treated. We want to be, we want to bring some hope. We want to bring some optimism. We want to bring some positivity, something infectious, some kind of enthusiasm, right? If we're not going to bring, you know, hopefully we're bringing some actual value, which we'll talk about, you know, that is going to return, uh, result on uh, some kind of return on investment for them, help them make more money. But if, but if anything, you know, maybe it's just um, a little bit of, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in a coaching sense, like a, uh, I'm trying to think of the right phrase, not a cheer up, but um, uh, like empowering, right? That we're that we believe in them. A couple of things to consider right now as we go into the second period um, is you know if businesses do begin struggling again, and some are like some are struggling. I I was speaking to a business owner. Um, 
the other, uh, last week. And unfortunately, the business owner, you know, said, unfortunately, you know, we, we were, we're shutting it down. Actually, we have to close the business. And I was very, very, you know, sorry to hear that. That was, that was a tough thing to hear. And I asked if it was due to COVID and it was due to COVID. And it made me think, you know, if, what if I had reached out earlier, um, would it have anything changed? I don't know. But, but what if, what if we were able to have that conversation maybe a month ago or three months ago and made some type of change? Either way, businesses right now have, have two uh, choices, right? Is it to survive or is it to thrive? Harvard Business Review studied earlier this year after studying 40 years of recessions, the toughest times we've had, found that the companies who grew did two things really well or did one of two things exceptionally well. One is they reduced inefficient operating expenses. Of course, right? As business owners, that's the first thing we're probably going to do. Take a look at each line item. Do we really need it? How can we maximize it? How can we reduce any inefficiency? Number two, though, what investments can we make or how could we increase our efforts to make more money, make more revenue, grow our, uh, 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 secure our cash flow? increase our margins, et cetera, right? It's, it's, it's kind of no different from any other time. We can either you know, look to re- reduce, uh, either save money or increase money. At KO, we really like to focus on, in our sales process, you know, teaching how to build value in the second one, showing businesses how we can help them, how our product or service will help them make more money, how it will make them thrive just fo- just versus just focusing on surviving focusing less on the scarcity and more on the opportunity of the abundance. However, both are realities that we need to grapple with as business owners. At the end of the day, if we're looking for reasons to reach out over the next 30 to 60 days, remember, nobody has ever complained about being overserved. If someone is reaching out with, with, with good energy, with education with value, no one's going to complain about this. One way to do this is is to look at maybe there's a better way to use old tools. Are there updates, changes, improvements in the way the clients have been using our products, our existing clients, our products or similar products over the past year, over the last three months? Take a hard look. When is the last time that we really connected and really found out what their experiences, experience was using these products and services. Filter by product line and see who's not using the full suite, right? So if we have the ability to provide more and to serve more to either reduce those inefficiencies or help them make more money, we should at least provide the option, provide the information that, that is available. Personalized training sessions. Are we hosting webinars or individualized training sessions for companies or for our clients? We can teach, right? We, can, we know if we're the experts, there's a, there's a certain amount of value and education we can provide, but we also can facilitate. We can take a team, right? And help, help them come up with what are the answers, take a challenge that we know we have expertise in, but really focus more on facilitating for that team to help them come to the conclusions themselves. And now we can build and provide feedback on those conclusions. There is a lot of value, right? Two heads are better than one, 10 heads are better than two. Most ideas come from, most valuable ideas come from the exchange between others with different viewpoints. Um, and also come from the, the quality of the questions. So if anything, if we can bring those quality questions that we know will lead to a certain direction or lead in a certain conclusion, that is a way, a great way to provide value. Being proactive. What might the client need that they haven't asked for? So here's our time to think, right? It's time to stand in their shoes. What might they need that they haven't asked for or realize? Cleaning, you know, on their, it could be cleaning up from a technical standpoint on their IT services. Is there some type of update? Is there some type of service that they should be using either now within the next 30 days or in 2021 or the first business quarter? Payment terms. Are there some type of payment terms they're not taking advantage of? Is there some type of flexibility that they might need or that might enhance their ability to serve their clients better 
over the next 30 days. The key to this though, is to be specific, right? No one has time to, you know, wonder what I'm, what I'm missing, right? I, I don't know. Just tell me. I don't, if I knew what I was missing, I wouldn't be missing it. However, if we can reach out and with a specific recommendation, with a specific question, and, and, and not force the client to think, but only see opportunity and see unrealized potential, again, this is another reason to reach out. And communities, there's no better time than now to realize that a, a communities equal economies. That's, that's ultimately what economies are. And if we look at the clients or the prospects that we serve, we should look at them from a sense of a community. I, you know, I value everyone who's on this webinar and, thank, and feel grateful for, for you all being a part of our community here at KO. Uh, and we hope to be a part of your community. And you know, we lean on each other. I was watching a documentary. I mentioned this in the last webinar and it, the documentary was on longevity. And if you look at longevity now and in in, in all this, much of the science that's coming out really speaks to you know, uh, prediction of lifespan or even quality of life comes down to the quality of the community that someone has around them. How frequently are they getting that connection? It's no different for businesses. If we're shutting ourselves off from our clients, if we're shutting ourselves off from prospects in the time where it's most important to keep that connection, we will not thrive either. So important to realize for longevity equals community and equals connection. So we wanna be connecting our clients and connecting with those in our industry. We can use technology to our advantage, right? That's, not, that's something that's not gonna change. Uh, hopefully we've all jumped on that bandwagon. I'm actually going to my first traditional networking event of the year um, later today after this webinar. And um, it's, I'm, I'm excited to go see people in person, but I know it's going to be different. And I'm even wondering, I have that like, that slight, you know, second guessing, like, should I really go? You know, COVID is ramping up, but I'm going. Ultimately though, we want to maximize how we can connect with technology. Connect clients in industries across geographies, time zones, more collaboration, less competition at this time. And if we do so, we can create talking points to potentially connect. Partnerships and panels. Who else targets a similar client base that we can partner with? How can we work together to create thought leadership? Host a regular panel, invite people for their advice, record, po uh, record post live and share. This is something that we're looking at actually for KO Advantage Group for next year. We're looking at offering our students more value by providing a masterclass on either a weekly or a, a biweekly basis starting in the first quarter of 2021 as a value add for our top tier students. Um, we're gonna be bringing in partners who we feel could add value to the business owners and the salespeople and the sales teams that we serve. Um, and I'm really excited for that. I know Kim's really excited for that. And that's what we should all be thinking of doing um, is, is really seeing how we can synergize to use a very cliche and maybe cheesy term, but there is value in the synergy. And celebrating our network. This is something we cannot do enough of. We cannot celebrate our network enough, especially on social media. We can be, you know, we should be tagging whether it's new clients, whether it's long-term clients, whether it is uh, prospective clients, people we had a great conversation with, those we had a great event with, somebody who shared great content, et cetera. Um, we can celebrate the network internally, but of course, the more we can do it externally, even the better. Focusing on building up our base as well. When is the last time we really took a hard look at the case studies that we have, the video testimonials, the features on our clients? If they're a little outdated, if they're a little dusty, like what better time than now to now take some new prospects, make them feel amazing, remind them of the great value that they experienced using our product or service. Let's keep those updated. Again, tag, celebrate, share with others in your network and get those to, ce to show, celebrate as well. And for case studies, if we are gonna be looking at remaking our case studies, we wanna make it easy for our clients to agree to this. We can book as an interview session 
right? So we can quickly facilitate and gather the information and not make them have to think about it and sit down and have like some kind of writer's block moment. Take the responses, write the story for them to approve, have them approve it. Three, three uh, bullets to keep us focused, situation, action, result. What was the situation? What was the action? And what was the result? Quantify, of course. Why did they not want to move forward initially? That is a great thing to include. Just about every prospect will have some kind of hesitancy, well, some, whether it's voiced or unvoiced. And that is where we, we can get into, um, we can face challenges as sales, right? If we're not getting to those unvoiced uh, concerns or hesitations. But the clients that did decide to move forward and make that change, why, why were they hesitant and why did they decide to move forward is a great way to frame now and provide um, so much more um, value on the result that they achieved because it was almost a result they didn't achieve because of some type of self-limiting belief. Research the reasons why. So we, we should be picking up the phone and talking to our clients and finding out the reasons why they decided to exchange with us and start that value relationship. Why do your clients work with you versus someone else? For a lot of us on here, there are different options for what we do. Why did they decide to go with us? When's the last time we revisited that question? What was the moment they decided to start using your services? How did they find you? When did they make that decision? It was likely well before the actual proposal or their final meeting or the final interaction. When was it? When was it on that buyer's journey? There's, there's multiple steps, right? We have the awareness, we have search for a solution. We have um, bringing others to, to, to determine whether this is the right solution, challenging of the fit, so many different steps. What change did they see since starting with you? Now that they have been with us for X amount of time, or what was the before and after? What was the before and after of their experience? And strategic planning for the future, keeping the conversations future focused as well. So there's a great, you know, the past focused, and there's also the future focus. However, and this is especially important for prospects. If we, a lot of times that's where the trepidation comes from a salesperson is like, I know they're not in a position to buy right now. They're going to say they're not in a position to buy. Take the pressure off the immediate sale and focus on the future farther out. Focus on where the client wants to be or where they want to go six months from now, two years, in, two years from now. We know 2021, you know, we're going to be itching to do so many things we couldn't have done in 2020. We know like 2022, 2023, lots of plans are now being thought of actually. That is one of the things about the pandemic is having to put 2020 on hold and having to go without doing certain things has actually taken our thinking for a lot of us farther into the future than we may have thought had 2020 just gone smoothly. Have those same conversations with the prospects and then work backwards to see what really needs to be done in between now and then to make that a reality. What do they need to prepare for? What do they need to think about that they're not thinking about now? What steps could they take between now and then to maximize that experience or maximize when they do take the leap and invest in that next step? What will it look like when they are there? Maybe we should get this, we should have this conversation, get this conversation going now. Maybe they haven't taken the time to really visualize. As we know, anytime you can get someone to visualize doing something or buying something, they are more likely to do it or buy it. Lots of social science behind that. Lots of experience where they've had customers, they've called customers, potential customers, prospects, uh, provided information about a product or service, called back, and then asked them to, to buy versus the next group where they, instead of providing information, they had them just visualize what it would be like to use this or experience this. Then they called back. The rates of compliance for the groups that visualize were leaps and bounds ahead of those who were just provided with information. And we should all agree, failing to plan is planning to fail. 
And, and that's, that's not only true for us, that's true potentially for our clients, that's true for our prospects. So if we can be a partner in, in that planning, in that important planning moment, if we can call attention to it or even be the one to participate in it, that is a value in and of itself. What does the future hold for their clients? This is something else we talk a lot about in our sales training is that third box thinking of how, do, how does our product or service help our client's client? Help your clients connect better with their clients. How can, how can we do that? How can we help? How can we help them create more impact? Uh, the more suggestions we can provide, the better, or we can be part of a brainstorming session and facilitate. And I've always wanted to reach a reason to reach out, right? So I, I think of like the holidays coming up, right? The holidays could seem like a no-go for many people, but if we spin that into an opportunity, it's something I used to do as a salesperson. I used to have my salespeople do, and it's, it's just a great reaction and it feels good. Like, you know, you have Thanksgiving coming up, reach out to people and wish them a happy Thanksgiving or ask them how their Thanksgiving was. You know, uh, I used to do this for Mother's Day. If I knew I had a prospect or, or a, a client who was a parent, I would reach out and wish them a happy Mother's Day. And the reaction was so good. And I didn't even have to say anything else about the sale because a lot of times they would just say it themselves, big, thank you so much. It was a great day. By the way, I'm sorry. Like, I haven't forgotten about you. It's just been crazy. Like, let's set up a time to meet like next week. Um, same thing for things. You know, we have opportunities now, whether it's things giving, whether it's some kind of holiday like Christmas, if they celebrate, or whether it's the new year, we should be using these to reach out and show that it's a real relationship and not just a sale. Ultimately, we want to demonstrate how we can help someone make more money. If we are in, of course, um, a business to business sale, which most of us are, many of us here are in. Some companies will be looking to reduce expenses. Others are looking to increase their revenue. Again, one of two things, ask if we can help. Hopefully we know, you know, we know we can help and we can be specific on how we could help. The goal is to make it easy for them to say yes to the meeting because we are providing specific solutions and clearly demonstrating how it would benefit them, even in this challenging time, even given all that. We should not be hiding from that fact ever. We always want to address the elephant in the room. Also, not go in knowing all the answers. That is important as well. So although we want to be specific, we want to be confident. We also don't want to go in knowing all the answers. This is going to be a relationship and this should be a two-way, this should really be a two-way exchange. This is, uh, should be viewed as a partnership in a way. We want to be willing to learn. We want to be open-minded, ask what, what they need, how we can help them. Definitely approach with humility as well as confidence. Creativity. We want to think about how we can be creative at this time. And one of the great things about reaching out to, and talking to people, putting this aside, because it, it can feel hard to be creative. One of the best things about reaching out and having actual conversations is then the creativity starts to take care of them itself because both people are having ideas. You know what? I didn't think of that. Oh, nobody's ever asked me that. Oh, you know what? Nobody's ever asked me to do that. Let me, let me actually just check with my team and see if that's possible. Boom. Now, if it, it, chances are, if you've provided value to one person through some type of creative idea, you can now package that and add and provide that to others. Are there bundles that we can provide with our product that we're not providing? Are there new service offerings that weren't uh, apparent before, but now seem really, really valuable? How can we help in a different way? How can we teach? There's more than just the product that the client likes about us, a lot of times they, you know, they value us, hopefully. The experience of working with us, the experience of talking with us, the questions that we're asking, something that we say in some of our webinars and in our training. And one of my, this is one of my favorite questions to keep top of mind is would your prospect or your client, but your client's already paid. So would, would your prospect pay for the experience of your sales call? 
if you are a salesperson or managing salespeople, please write down that question. Would the prospect pay for the experience of speaking with you in a sales call? Are you asking compelling, relevant, thoughtful questions that's getting people to realize potentials and new, new opportunities that they weren't uh, thinking of or, or really were thinking of but didn't realize were possible? Be willing to service the ones forgotten. It's, you know, and th this can be like taking, uh, you can go so many different ways with this. Who are your competitors not, not focusing on? What's the opportunity there? Have they pivoted now? So many people are pivoting, right? Maybe someone has pivoted away and now customers or prospects are not being served the way they can. These clients are the ones most likely to leave because they're open to any help. Go after those who want the help the most. Ultimately though, Think of who are the ones maybe who are forgotten, whether it's in your pipeline, in your CRM for your prospects, or whether it's past clients, um, who, who knows? It, it's going to be the outreach that is, well, oftentimes it can be the outreach that's the most unexpected, that can be the most impactful. The bright side is sometimes though, when we're having these conversations, we realize that there's an opportunity to go in for the fast transaction. It's not always going to be difficult. It's not always hold off and put, you know, let's worry about, let's worry about later. I mean, let's not worry about this until later. There could be a real opportunity. Not every business is struggling. Some are, and not every, and not every prospect is struggling. Some are thriving. Some want to take advantage of the opportunities of a tough or difficult time. Can, you, um, can we immediately save money, time, or energy for this person? Does it take no or minimal effort on my part? Can I do it quickly? How fast will I see the results? You know, don't beat around the bush if the value is right there. Why, like, why beat around the bush? And a meeting is always better than no meeting. This is something also that is gonna be, that is reinforced time and time again. If, if we are continuing to schedule meetings and there are meetings on the calendar, then the sales process is still alive and is still going and it's not stalled. The client might not want to be meet right away. They might not be ready. They might not have the availability. That's okay. Let's get that next meeting on the calendar. Booking a meeting weeks in advance is better than no meeting at all. The meeting can always be adjusted later. It could always be declined later though. But let's reinforce that. Let's set up a time to talk again and further this relationship. And if that is, is, is see, if, if after all this, it seems daunting, for you or your sales team, you know, that, that is okay. You've taken the first step to get to educate yourself and learn from like-minded people, but education is not application. And that is something um, we, we have to live by in sales, whether you're a salesperson, sales manager, or sales trainer, you have to realize that sales is not one of those things where you learn something and you can do. You have to apply it, same as you would a musical instrument or a sport. Your salespeople have to be practicing. They have to be practicing, and they have to also be applying and reflecting. Mm -hmm. However, please contact myself, contact Kim, anyone on our team. We are here to help you with that. That is why we are here with the webinars. That is why we do what we do. We want to help you actually apply the right education so now you can help your business thrive. Jenny Chen is one of these people in our community. Close rate went from 20 or 30% to 70%. Making proposals and, and going from, you know, getting one out of 10 accepted to going now to, 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 to one out of two. Game changer. We offer subscription-based sales training but we, I, you know, I don't want anyone to worry about that. And so, you know, some of us have already, you know, explore that, but let's start with 20 minutes of a deep dive. Let's talk a sales strategy session. I love to meet with people and talk about, you know, how we can help you with whatever it is, your current challenges or the opportunity you see. It, you'd be amazed 
what when we take a one-on-one -on -one dive and actually create a really customized strategy, what 20 minutes can achieve. The meeting there, bit.ly slash KO meeting is how you can book a meeting with our team. Neezy, we'll put that in the chat as well. Whether we have had a meeting before or not, I would love to meet with everyone here on this webinar. Or if you if 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 you don't you know want to take the time to meet, who in your network? Who do you feel could benefit from spending 20 minutes with us? Who could experience value now from having someone take a really close look at their sales strategy over the next 30, 16, or 90 days? It can, it can be like magic. There are sometimes it's asking a few different questions. Sometimes it's understanding how to really truly qualify your prospect. There, there are a million different areas in the sales process that can, can stand to be improved. But you know, when you are able to create emotional, true emotional buy-in, it can be like magic. We are here to provide the slides for you as well. We want to you know, help you close as much as you can the next 30 days. Please, if anything, do not sacrifice December. Do not slash it off the calendar. Do look forward to January, but do not look over December, please. There is lots of opportunity to have. There's lots of people to serve. There's lots of value to provide in the next five weeks. And what is one thing you took away from today? That is what I'd love to know. Please let me know in the chat. What is the one thing you took away from today's webinar? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Brian, discover those moments. Like what were those light bulb moments where they said, wow, like I want it. I, 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 I have to do this. Julia, continue reaching out. Yeah. Don't, don't ever stop. Keep having the conversations. The conversations will create, um, again, the conversations can breed creativity in themselves. Yes, and stay connected, stay close with your clients, provide value, keep the relationship top of mind. Christine, keep the conversation future, fo future focused while empathizing on the now. Very well said, I like that, that was a great, if you could summarize the spirit of this, you did a great job. And B, yes, I will uh, share the link for the slides for sure. Stephanie, yes, put yourself in your customer shoes, absolutely. Awesome. And thank you, Neezy, there for sh uh, sharing the link. Go ahead and book some time. I wouldn't be practicing what I preach just now if I wasn't willing to meet with you for 20 minutes, but I am, I am uh, eager to meet. Let's lean on each other. Let's all get to a better place in the next, in the next five weeks. Thank you, B. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, Brian. It's been great to it's been great to get to know you guys and, and your businesses over the past few months. I'm looking forward to, to, to the, you know, the rest of the journey here. <laughs> On the Jersey Shore. Oh, okay. Wow. I don't know if it's as cold down there as it is here in New York today, but ooh, it is chilly. <laughs> Yeah, the situation. Jersey Shore is coming back to another another season. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure as it always is. We'll be here again next Wednesday. I actually don't know the topic off the top of my head. So keep you in suspense a little bit, but um, we'll make it a good one. Thanks, everybody.